finish off what you started. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Valla Bhagiri Vardhari Gopi Jana Valla Bhagiri Vardhari Jasura Nandana Praja Jana Danjana Jasura Nandana Prajajana Ranjana Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janna Bala Bhagiri Vardhari Gopi Janna Bala Bhagiri Vardhari Jasura Nandana Prajajana Ranjana Jasura Nandana Prajajana Ranjana Jasura Nandana Prajajana Ranjana Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabihari Jaya Mishnabhad Bhadamahamsa Parivraja Kajaja Shodra Shri Shri Mahad is the one grace by Jaranara Vinda Bhakti Vranta Sami Shira Bhopada Ki Jai Jaya Mishnabhad Bhadamahamsa Parivraja Kajaja Shodra Shri Shri Mahad is the one grace Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Sharashwati Gosa Maharaj Bhopada Ki Jai Nantakuti Vaishnava Vrinda Ki Jai Iskand Vandacharya BBT Vandacharya Shila Bhopada Ki Jai Namacharja Srila Hari Das Thakur Ki Jai Grantara Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai Sambhira Bhakti Ki Jai Go Bremanandi All glories to some of the devotees 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 Guru and Sri Gauranga uh, Moga heard it was going to be a heavy class this morning So you've kind of moved away from me he was saying, see, him? he heard, he, can you open that up a little bit, one of those doors, just get some air in here. Hmm? Yes, 
He knew. How would? How did he know? Okay. This one, the speaker has a lot of hot air. They open the doors. So they always do it on Tuesday, I notice. Hare Krishna. Should we read about Srila Prabhupada first or at the end? Okay. So before I begin the Srimad Bhagavatam class, I'll just read a page or two from the very, it's the last few pages of the first volume of Srila Prabhupada Lilamrita. And this is Prabhupada's uh, getting on the boat. Today is the day that Prabhupada stepped on to the Jaladuta. You know, there were a few Jaladutas. Yeah, there's a few. Yeah. No, that could have been the same boat, but I was just interesting. I was reading one account, and there's actually, there's a, I don't know, I think Satyaraj wrote a long article in Back to Godhead about Prabhupada's coming, and he, he researches all these things, a few Jaladutas, like that. And uh, there's a Mr. Bhattacharya referred to quite often in his last few pages. He was with Srila Prabhupada, and it came to the attention of some devotees later on after this was published that his account that he was the only one with Srila Prabhupada when Prabhupada got on the Jaladutta was incorrect. We'll put it that way. Because Vrindavan, Prabhupada's son Vrindavan, was there, and there were a few people who came to Prabhupada to send him off. Okay. Okay, so we'll start with here. Now, this is, uh, you know, Sh uh, Shimati or Mrs. Mayorji. She was the head of the Skindia Steam Company. Morarji, yes. Excuse me, what did I say? My orgy. <laughs> no over there. Morarji. Well, dyslexic. I'm, I'm sorry. A little dyslexic. Uh, Prabhupada came and just insisted and waited and waited and waited. And the secretaries, he just sat, he just sat there. He just wouldn't go until he got that. Prabhupada was so determined. And so, and they had a very nice relationship. And even in, after uh, agreeing to all that, Prabhupada was staying in their, the quarters of the employees and so on, and giving Bhagavatam class at her, at her estate and so on. So she really much appreciated Srila Prabhupada and can see that he was different in the sadhu. And uh, even though she said, you know, I, I feel reluctant to do this because I may be sending you to your death. Mm -hmm. You're an old man, elderly man. The trip is, it's not like uh, Prabhupada didn't have money for a, 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 to fly. Yeah, and uh, you know how how long was the trip? I guess we'll read months. that in a little while when it's the prop of the day prop had arrived, and it's like two months, right? Yeah, about two months at sea. I was out yesterday for about an hour and a half with the Kuravadis, and it was a calm day. But even then, it was like oh. as you can see. Whoa! Can you imagine that? Just they didn't know they had a yacht. They don't. They, you you hire a company, they bring you out about a mile. Oh, I see. And you come back in, so. It's called, uh, I, 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 can, I, can I just do like one absolutely. quick note about Please. Srimati Moraji? The, uh, the, the Miami temple was, uh, they had to sell the big temple on the beach. I was, I was there just before they had to leave, so I left. That was in 89, about July. And they, they had secured a place in uh, Coconut Grove, a, a nice building, and they have the, the temple there. And uh, I forget, because I, I kept in touch with some of the devotees there, and I said, Mrs. Morarji, that she was still around, she may be, you know, she's pretty elderly at that time, um, she, she made a contribution to the, a significant contribution to the decoration of that temple on the inside, in, ba in the maybe early 90s or something like that, so it's interesting. And that boat was still sailing, because I just remember when I was a brahmachari in Boston in the early, mid-70s, uh, one Sunday feast, there were a few uh, shipmates from the Jaladuta came to the Sunday feast. They must have docked in Boston for some time, and they came. They were just ecstatic Bengalis, you know, like that. And they were from the Jaladuta. There was like three or four of them. They, they were from the Jaladuta. It was in port, so. Okay. So it says, finally, Mrs. Morarji scheduled a place for him on one of her ships, the Jaladuta, which was, and this is the order of 
his spiritual master, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, and all the Acharyas to spread Krishna consciousness all over the world. And that, that's actually a, a instruction or mandate or request to all of us, to all the devotees and followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to just keep preaching all over the world. So Prabhupada took that up. So on the Jaladuta, which was sailing from Calcutta on August 13th, she had made certain that he would travel on a ship whose captain understood the needs of a vegetarian and a brahmana. Mrs. Mararji told the ca Jaladuta's captain, Arun Pandya, to carry extra vegetables and fruits for the Swami. Mr. Chokshi, that's her uh, assistant, secretary, spent the last two days with Bhaktivedanta Swami in Bombay, picking up the plant pamphlets at the press, purchasing clothes and driving him to the station to catch the train to Calcutta. He arrived in Calcutta about two weeks before the Jaladutta's departure. Although he had lived much of his life in the city, he now had nowhere to stay. It was as he had written in his Vrindavan Bhajan, I have my wife, sons, daughters, grandsons, everything, but I have no money, so they are a fruitless glory. Although in this city he had been so carefully nurtured as a child, those early days were also gone forever. Where have my loving father and mother gone now? And where are all my elders who were my own folk? Who will give me the news of them? Tell me who. All that is left of this family life is a list of names. Out of the hundreds of people in Calcutta whom Bhaktivedanta Swami knew, he chose to call a Mr. Sirshir Bhattacharya, the flamboyant kirtan singer he had met a year before at the governor's house in Lucknow. Mr. Bhattacharya was not a relative, not a disciple, nor even a close friend, but he was willing to help. Bhaktivedanta Swami called at his place and informed him that he would be leaving on a cargo ship in a few days. He needed a place to stay and he would like to give some lectures. Mr. Bhattacharya immediately began to arrange a few private meetings at friends' homes where he would sing and Bhaktivedanta Swami would then speak. Mr. Bhattacharya thought the sadhus leaving for America should make an important news story. He accompanied Bhaktivedanta Swami to all the newspapers in Calcutta, the Hindustan Standard, the Amrita Bazar Patrika, the Jagantas, the statesmen and others. Bhaktivedanta Swami had only one photograph, a passport photo, and they made a few copies for the newspapers. Mr. Bhattacharya would try to explain what the Swami was doing, and the news writers would listen, but none of them wrote anything. Finally, they, they visited the Dainik Bashumati, a local Bengali daily, which agreed to print a small article with Bhaktivedanta Swami's picture. Mr. Bhattacharya continued to assist Bhaktivedanta Swami with his final business and speaking engagements. Mr. Bhattacharya says, We just took a higher taxi to this place and that place, and then he would go for preaching. I never talked to him during the preaching, but once when I was coming back from the preaching, I said, You said this thing about this, but I tell you, it is not this, it is this. I crossed him in something or argued, and he was furious. Whenever we argued and I said, no, I think it is this, and he was shouting. He was furious. He said, you are always saying, I think, I think, I think. What is the importance of what you think? Everything is what you think, but it doesn't matter. It matters what Shastra says. You must follow. I, I said, I must do what I think, what I feel. That is important. He said, no, you should forget this. You should forget your desire. You should change your habit. Better you depend on Shastra's. Uh, you follow what Shastras wants you to do and do it. I'm not telling you what I think, but I'm repeating what the Shastra says. The day before his departure, Bhaktivedanta Swami traveled to nearby Mayapur to visit the Samadhi of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. He then returned to Calcutta. He was ready. <clears throat> he had only a suitcase, an umbrella, a supply of dry cereal. He did not know what he would find to eat in America, perhaps there would be only meat. If so, he was prepared to live on boiled potatoes and cereal. His main baggage, several trunks of his books, was being handled separately by Cindia Cargo, 200 three-volume sets. The very thought of the books gave him confidence. When the day came for him to leave, he needed that confidence. He was making a momentous break from his previous life, 
and he was dangerously old and not in strong health, and he was going to an unknown and probably unwelcoming country. In one lecture I heard recently, Prabhupada was telling the devotees that, oh yes, when I was on the boat there, the Jaladuta in Boston, I was thinking, uh, if I tell them no meat eating, no intoxication, no list of sick, no gambling, they will say, go home. <laughs> so unwelcoming, go home. We don't want you here. To be poor and unknown in India was one thing. Even in, in these Kali Yuga days, when India's leaders were rejecting Vedic culture and init imitating the West, it was still India. It was still the remains of Vedic civilization. He had been able to see millionaires, governors, and the prime minister simply by showing up at their doors and waiting. A sannyasi was respected. The Srimad Bhagavatam was respected. But in America, it would be different. He would be no one, a foreigner. And there would be no tradition of sadhus, no temples, no free ashrams. But when he thought of the books he was bringing, transcendental knowledge in English, he became confident. When he met someone in America, he would give him a flyer, Srimad Bhagavatam, India's message of peace and goodwill. It was August 13th, just a few days before Janmashtami, the appearance day, appearance day anniversary of Lord Krishna. The next day would be his own 70th birthday. During these last years, he had been in Vrindavan for Janmashtami. Hmm? It says 70th here. Yeah, because they count the day you're born as a birthday. Okay. Uh, during these last years, he had been in Vrindavan for Janmashtami. Many Vrindavan residents would never leave there. They were old and at peace in Vrindavan. Bhaktivedanta Swami was also concerned that he might die away from Vrindavan. This was why all the Vaishnav sadhus and widows had taken vows not to leave even for Mathura, because to die in Vrindavan was the perfection of life. And the Hindu tradition was that a sannyasi should not cross the ocean and go to the land of the Malachas. That's where we are, Prabhu, we're in the land of Malachas. You probably figured that out by now, right? Okay, but beyond all that was the desire of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, and his desire was non-different from that of Lord Krishna. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had predicted that the chanting of Hare Krishna would be known in every town and village of the world. Mr. Bhattacharya and Bhaktivedanta Swami took a taxi down to the Calcutta port. Bhaktivedanta Swami was carrying a Bengali copy of Chaitanya Charitamrita, which he intended to read during the crossing. Somehow he'd be able to cook on board. Or if not, he could starve, whatever Krishna desired. He checked his essentials, passenger ticket, Passport, visa, passport, visa, P form. That's the form India gives you, says you can leave the country. It was very difficult to get that. Sponsor's address. Finally, it was happening. Srila Prabhupada. With what great difficulty I got out of the country. There's an exclamation mark there. Some way or other, by Krishna's grace, I got out so I could spread the Krishna conscious movement all over the world. Otherwise, to remain in India, it was not possible. I wanted to start a movement in India but I was not at all encouraged. The black cargo ship, small and weathered, was moored at dockside, a gangway leading from the dock to the ship's deck. Indian merchant sailors curiously eyed the elderly saffron-dressed sadhu as he spoke last words to his companions and then left them and walked determinedly toward the boat. You know, both sailors and construction guys are known for being a little bit rough are a lot rough, right? Their language and their... So those are the two, two right? Isn't that true? Sailors. you got a sailor's mouth. Sometimes you haven't said that. you got a mouth of a sailor. Don't ever let anyone say that to you. You know, that means that's bad if they tell you that. So we're a construction worker. So Hare Krishna. For thousands of years, Krishna Bhakti had been known only in India, not outside, except in twisted, faithless reports by foreigners. And the only Swamis who had reached America had been non-devotees, Mayavadi and personalists. But now Krishna was sending Bhaktivedanta Swami as his emissary. Mr. Bhattacharya, he was alone, a lone fighter. When he left, there was no one on the shore to bid him goodbye. This is not true. No friends, no supporter, no disciple, nobody. Even if you call me, I was not a disciple of his. I was a disciple of somebody else. So I was not his follower. 
but due to shared love, I had very much respect for him. So I was the only person standing on the shore to say him goodbye. No one was with me. I could not know that it was such an important thing. And Prabhupada walked up the plank. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. And he brought 200 copies of this, Srimad Bhagavatam. Because he knew if the books were there, everything would come to, come to pass. So is there text three on the board? Yeah, because then we'll go on to four, who has the purport. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Bhavan Prajapate Sakshad Atmajaha Paramishtinaha Sutanam Sammato Brahmam Tapo Yoga Samadhi Vihi Bhavan Prajapate Sakshad Atmaja Paramishtinaha Sutanam samato brahmam tapo yoga samadhi vihi bhavan prajapate sakshad atmaja parameshtinaha sutanam samato brahmam tapo yoga samadhi vihi would like to chant. Sutanam Sammato Brahmam On behalf of all the ladies in the Krishna Conscious Movement, would you like to chant? Bhavan Bhavade Sakshad Atmaja Paraneshritaha Sudhanam Samato Brahmam Tapo Yoga Samadhi Bhavan Your Lordship Prajapate of Prajapati, Lord Brahma, Sakshat, directly, Atmajaha, the Son, Parameshtinaha, uh, of the Supreme Person within this universe, Lord Brahma, Sutanam, of all the sons, Sammataha, agreed upon as the best. Brahman, O best of the Brahmanas, Tapaha, by austerity, Yoga, by mystic practice, Samadhi Bihi, and by trance or meditation. In all respects, you are the best. 
Translation, O best of the Brahmanas, you are directly the son of Prajapati, Lord Brahma. Because of your austerities, mystic yoga, and trance, you are considered the best of all Lord Brahma's sons. Text 4. Narayana para vipra dharmam guyam param viduhu karuna sadava shantas tvad vidhana tata pare. Translation in purport by Srila Prabhupada. No one is superior to you in peaceful life and mercy. No one knows better than you how to execute devotional service or how to become the best of the brahmanas. Therefore, you know all the principles of confidential religious life, and no one knows them better than you. Purport. Yudhisthira Maharaj knew that Narada Muni is the supreme spiritual master of human society who can teach the path of spiritual liberation leading to the understanding of the supreme personality of Godhead. Actually, it is for this purpose that Narada Muni compiled his Bhakti Sutra and gave directions in the Narada Pancharatra. To learn about religious principles and the perfection of life, one must take instruction from the disciplic succession of Narada Muni. Our Krishna consciousness movement is directly in the line of the Brahma Sampadaya. Narada Muni received instructions from Lord Brahma and in turn transmitted the instructions to Vyasadeva. Vyasadeva instructed his son Shukadeva Goswami, who spoke Srimad Bhagavatam. The Krishna conscious movement is based on Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. Because Srimad Bhagavatam was spoken by Shukadeva Goswami and Bhagavad Gita was spoken by Krishna, there is no difference between them. If we strictly follow the principle of disciplic succession, we are certainly on the right path of spiritual liberation or eternal engagement in devotional service. Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Nena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadama Yam Dadati Swapadandikam Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nitananda Sri Dvaita Gadadha Shivasari Gaur Bhakti Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Banchika Patru Bhascha Kripa Sindhu Beva Chapaditanam Bhavani Bhu Vaishnavi Bhu Namo Namaha So by your good wishes and prayers, I'll try to say something. It's going to be a very eloquent class because true eloquence is essential to be spoken concisely, and I have three minutes. <laughs> no pressure. All right. Yeah, well, three minutes. If it's Brahma Loka, I'll be dead and gone by the time I finish class. Hare Krishna. Yeah, all of us. Okay. I don't think it's going to be that good of a class. Okay. There's a few things here. One, uh, the last line is, is, it just reminds me of what we just read. This Mr. Bhattacharya, the flamboyant Kirtanir, he brought that up. His most memorable uh, discussion with Srila Prabhupada was he says, I think this, I think this, and Prabhupada was yelling at him. This point that one has to follow Shastra, one has to follow the disciplic succession. Uh, it's a um, interesting phenomenon that people consider, you know, there are certain things that you have to listen to other people about. That's why we go to doctors and have an attorney and you have a financial advisor. If you're married, you better listen to your wife, as you like you sure. He's, he's nodding his head like, like anything. So there's certain people you better listen to, you have to listen to, because they probably know more than you. Okay, uh, and what they are discussing, there's a science behind it. You know, there's a science of medicine, there's a science of, you know, so they call those that the ology, study of, like astrology, and this, that, whatever. Uh, but when it comes to spiritual life, somehow or other, no, no, it's just whatever you, whatever you think, that's what it is. What is that? Yatamat? Yatapat, tatamat. Whatever you. Is the putt, is the path. Okay. Why? In other words, spiritual life is not a science. Uh, what's actually going on in this world of spirit and matter and what's beyond the spiritual world and the process for extracting ourselves or returning to the spiritual world 
is not a science, but that actually doesn't even make any sense. Doesn't make any sense at all. It's actually the most important sense, uh, science. Krishna says, Raja Vidya Raja Guyam. Raja Vidya. It is, Raja means the king. The king is the person on top. It's, it's the king of knowledge, the king of education, the most secret of secrets. Like that. And it gives a, a direct perception of the self by realization. It is everlasting and is joyfully performed. This is what Krishna says. In the most purifying. So that's what we say spiritual life is. And uh, the last line here is that we have to follow the principle of the succession, that information, that knowledge is coming down. It's very, very, it's essential that we understand these things. That's the difference between human life and animal life. A human being can understand these things and appreciate these things. And that Prabhupada brings that out in the purport also, that Narada Muni is the supreme spiritual master of human society, and he can, he can teach the path of spiritual liberation, ultimately leading to the supreme personality of Godhead. Now, what more information is more important than that? I mean, you can say, well... People have different interests in life. For me, it's, it's, I'm not really interested in spiritual life. I've, I have other interests like that. But that's very shallow. We would say that's very shallow. If you just stand back and, and think about things, you're thoughtful. Just like in the Bhagavad Gita, it says about knowledge and the different modes of material nature. It says knowledge and the mode of ignorance is the person just concerned about their day-to-day -day work, making some money and enjoying their senses. There's, there's nothing beyond that, just working hard and, 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 and fulfilling the animal propensities. So is there anything beyond that? Obviously there is, because a lot of people are moved beyond that. There's something much more than that. Uh, and uh, Beyond just being happy in this material world, there must be something more than that because even the so-called happiest people in this material world, they become unhappy. They become unhappy. So is there real, is there real unadulterated happiness? Is there a level of existence beyond our mind and body? There seems to be. If you quiet things down and just listen. Did everyone ever tell you just, just be quiet and listen? <laughs> you don't have to be too quiet in Grand Avenue to hear things. But, you know, even just the, that's referring to the ears, but also just your heart and your mind. Just calm down and just be quiet. Who was it? Oh, yes, okay. It was this, uh, she may be in college, or maybe a senior in high school. I mentioned her the other day in class, a puja I did about a week or two ago. And she was, she was asking this question about karma and how people use karma as a reason not to help other people. And the whole question, should we really help other people if it's their karma to suffer? You know, can we really do anything? And uh, where am I going with this? She brought up another point. I tell you, getting, getting old, losing it, losing it. Where was I? Back me up. But before that, because I wanted to bring her up, that's one of the things she made, another point she made also. Okay, okay, okay. She went on a Buddhist retreat for one week, no talking. And the whole idea was if you don't talk, you're very, very quiet, you can go within and experience so many different things, you know. And she appreciated it. Now, obviously, there was no... You're left to your own <laughs> mind and, and whatever. But just that endeavor itself, she appreciated. It's true. If you just stop for a while and just calm down and just listen, listen with this and listen in, you know, life is different. If we don't have time to, to the point is, we don't take the time to think about what we're doing, what they call it now, mindfulness, this mindfulness and so on. And, but that mindfulness and so on has to be directed. And that's why you need a spiritual master, spiritual authorities, because that's just a tool. You can really sit down and think about how you're going to join the material world. Right? People do that also. They just sit down. You know, so many creative people in the world of arts or even business, they get up very early. 
This one financial advisor I know, he's up at 3 a.m. too. He's up at 3 a.m. checking the markets in Asia and Disney different places, you know. Uh, up early, but that's his business. That's his business. Very nice, you know, but that's his business. But he's up early, very early, quiet, it's peaceful, and he can get a lot done. Mm hmm? Yes, Brown Morita, mind's peaceful. So he's taking advantage of something, but we say take advantage of Brahma Mahurta early morning, take advantage of mindfulness and just contemplation for spiritual things, for spiritual, because these, these are just tools, these are just tools. But anyway, she made that point that it was quite nice to be able to just quiet down and think about life. So that's what we say is if you, if you, if you move up from ignorance and passion into goodness, everything looks different. Everything looks different. You know, it's just according to the modes of nature. That's why Krishna, in the 17th and 18th chapter, if you read, they talk about so many different things in our lives, in the world, in the different modes of nature. Determination, intelligence, knowledge, food, right? One man's food is another man's poison, right? We think, who could not like a vegetarian diet? But there are people who go like, my goodness. How could you live on something like that? You're a rabbit or something, right? Like that. And then we'd look at their food and, and run like that. Something, something got massacred, you know? There's been a bloodbath or something. What's going on here? So it's different modes of nature. And then you have transcendence also. But according to the modes of nature, we see everything in this material world. So someone said, oh, that, and that's, people leave it at that. And earlier I said, that's, that's your life. This is my life, and it's all equal. Well, that, what that does is, is saying that there's no reality greater than you or me and our craniums and what's going on upstairs. But there's a whole reality outside of us, and it's going on no matter what we think. No matter what we think, it's moving. So those who, who are in knowledge understand that, and they understand that greater reality, and they can reveal it to us, and that's what Krishna consciousness is all about. So Yudhisthira Maharaj is glorifying Narada Muni. He is the best. Lord Brahma is the creator of this universe. He had some sons, and Narada Muni is the best because him being the great devotee. Uh, Devarishi, right? He's called Devarishi, Devarshi, Narada. He, he's the, he's the, the, the sage among the demigods, not just sage among human beings, amongst the devatas. And he's such a great transcendental personality, even the demons are very, very respectful to him. Whatever he says, okay. Just like when the demons, uh, uh, the demigods, they captured Kayadu, the uh, Hrnakashibu's wife, and they were going to take her away and wait till the child was born. He just said, stop, don't do that. And they just think, we got to do this because Hrnakashibu, this is, and they just, okay. They, and he said, no, no, you don't understand. Inside that womb is a great devotee, a pure devotee of Krishna. And they accepted exactly what he said. They circumambulated her, paid him, all, paid Pallad all kinds of respects, and then he just took her to his ashram. So uh, devotees and demons were very, very respectful to Narada Muni, greatest authority, great authority, and uh, completely competent to describe all varieties of religion. In fact, that's what we go into, the perfect society, behavior of perfect person, some is ideal family life, sannyas life, all the dharmas explained here, and on the, in concluding in Krishna consciousness, a devotional service. Uh, that, that, that's a sign of a, someone who really knows a subject. They know the conclusion of the subject. They know the conclusion. Why is all that information there? There's a conclusion. There actually is a conclusion or goal, gati, in life. There has to be a goal, a superior goal, a supreme goal. So they're speaking in this way. So Narada Muni, all the Sampradayas, Prabhupada says our movement's based upon Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, so we have to understand these literatures. And uh, just like Prabhupada, I'll end with this, just like Srila Prabhupada was so confident about his coming to this country all by himself at such an old, old age and not in such good health and all those difficulties, what gave him the greatest confidence to do this? that trunk of books, the order of his spiritual master and that trunk of books, because he knew if that Bhagavatam was distributed and people read it and understood it, 
Krishna consciousness would spread. Trunks. Trunks. 200, yeah, it's a 200, 200 sets. The trunks of books. So that, that's, uh, uh, so we have to have that confidence also that uh, our lives would be completely transformed as we're following the Bhagavatam and the Gita. And this uh, spreading of Prabhupada's books, distributing of Prabhupada's books, it just keeps going. Prabhupada was the first book distributor. He had a few cases, a few trunks of books with him. And it just, now it's how many books have been published and printed and all over? Millions and millions and millions. 600 million books came out of those two trunks. It's like a seed, right? Like a banyan tree. And it's, and it's going to keep growing. It just keeps growing and growing. So we're all part of that. As long as we follow the principle of disciplic succession, we are certainly on the right path of liberation or eternal engagement in devotional service. Otherwise, Srila Prabhupada is going to yell at us like he yelled at Mr. Bhattacharya. My dad. <laughs> So we can end here because of the time. So this goes back to 71, where I was just getting into Christian consciousness, you know. And I was working in a hospital. So after a year there, they gave me a, a week's vacation, paid vacation. So I took the opportunity to go on a retreat with the, uh, the what, is it, what was it, the, the uh, Integral Yoga people up in, up in uh, Connecticut. You know, it was a nice... It had been a nun school, and they vacated, and we just got it. So, silence. You weren't supposed to talk the whole week. <laughs> That's what reminded me of it. So I didn't really have anyone to talk to. It was great, you know. And I was, I was chanting. I was reading Be Here Now. I, I didn't have any of Prabhupada's books. I, it was, um, but I was, I was chanting and doing a little yoga and everything. And at the end, it was this kirtan. It wasn't Hare, it wasn't Hare Krishna kirtan. But they had this Jai Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Om. And I was so attuned at that point. It was just very, you know, very wonderful. But afterward, I, we were all getting on the bus. And I, I, I just told whoever was nearby, I said, you know, one thing I learned, the main thing I learned about the, from this retreat is that all you have to do is chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> 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 I had been chanting some Japa, you know. And I think I got some benefit from that from Ochitanya. And it was a, maybe a, a year after that I joined. Ty. Any other questions or comments? Okay, so we can end here. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Prabhupada.